and we are live good afternoon welcome to the hangout show again so as you can see today we've got the lovely anita faulkner with us um anita do you want to just introduce yourself and maybe start off saying how we we met how we know each other and just kind of telling telling everyone a little bit about yourself i know a lot of people in my audience already know you um but yeah do you want to just introduce Yes, yes, I will, I will. Oh, I've got a bit of feedback of you. No, I haven't got anything. It does happen okay. a lot. It seems to happen when some when people are wearing earphones and like they say they get a feedback noise. <laughs> okay. Um hopefully I haven't got too much robot voice. Oh, that's better. That's better. So hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are all well. Um, thanks, Beth, for having me. Who am I? Who am I? That's always a weird question for me at the moment because I feel like I'm a woman with lots of hats. I know that's probably familiar to you as well. Um, but essentially, I'm a writer. So um, I am a copywriter for coaches and creatives, which basically means, ladies, if you can't be bothered to write the words for your websites or your sales funnels or your launches, I can do that for you. <laughs> or... Um, <laughs> Or if you've written the words already and you want feedback on those words, I can help you edit them or give you a bit of advice on, on how you can make them better. And the other type of writing that I do is I'm an author. So I write romantic comedy novels. Um, my first novel is going to be out next year with um, a big publisher called Little Brown. Um, yeah, it's available for pre-order now on Amazon. Otherwise, you can grab it next year in June. <laughs> it's very exciting. Um, so, uh, Max and Sarah have just joined us. Hi, ladies. Oh, hello. hello. So, like, yeah, you've got so much going on, haven't you, lately? And, like, I've really seen things ramping up as well, especially, like, with the PR and everything. So, tell, tell everyone a little bit about that, like, you know, for anyone who may be sort of wanting to um, utilize a little bit of PR and get a bit more spotlight, which you were doing really, really well at the moment. So like, I don't know, maybe talk about that. What, what would you, what kind of advice would you give people around that? Um, yeah, you're totally right about the PR. So I learned all of that from you, basically, Beth. So thank you for that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, what happened with the PR, it kicked off really with just the fact that I've got my own website and I'm all over social media chatting and stuff. And um, a lady from the BBC Radio Gloucestershire got in touch and said, oh, I love your website. I love the vibe. I love um, your positivity and stuff. Would you come on one of our shows? And so, um, yeah, I went on the radio and from that she's invited me to be part of a regular feature on the radio so it's called the Gloucestershire group huddle so we get together um, every few weeks and just talk about whatever stuff and we get to promote ourselves as well a bit at the end um, and then from that because I'd been on the radio once um, another radio station got in touch and said will you come on the radio for us too um, oh I'm up for um, I'm up for an award with the Romantic Novelists Association as well. So that's, um, I've been shortlisted for, what's it called now? Media Star of the Year 2021. So that's an exciting bit of PR. Yeah. <laughs> so there'll be some press releases hopefully coming out about that. So yeah, just just show up, I think. I think that's yeah. the main thing, isn't it? Just show up and be seen and yeah. and you'll attract the right people to you. And that's it as well, isn't it? I think it's like these things have a knock on effect. Like you said, like once you'd been on one, they was like mm. kind of opens those doors, doesn't it, to the other opportunities. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's really, really good when you can do that. And it's like, could you ever imagine yourself doing these things a few years ago? Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's really, like, it's all your fault, Beth, really, because you were the, <laughs> the one who kicked me up the bum. Um, you <laughs> gave me my first opportunity, basically, to do some training in um, in a Facebook group of one of your businessy friends. And then, yeah, once I did that, it just spiraled. So more people want to want you to give training or you feel brave because you've done the first one. So, yeah, you just need someone like you to kick you up the bum, get you started. And then, and then yeah, you're just done it does. Somewhere. 
it's definitely like a ripple effect, isn't it? Like a little yes. snowball effect. And yes. it's certainly like that. And I always, I find that as well, because like, even when you're really established in business and sometimes you could take your foot off the pedal or like take a step back. Like I certainly yep. have taken a step back this year with having my daughter. And it's just one of those things again, You it's just kind of putting your foot back in it. And it is, it does have a snowball effect. As soon as you do like one thing or one door opens, it's just, it does massively have a knock on effect. So many other opportunities yeah. prevent themselves. And I don't know if that's like, you know, because you're putting yourself out there and then things are like coming your way or whether it's just, you know, the fact that you take an action and that action pays off. Um, but either way, it's like the same concept, isn't it? So whether you're like a woo-woo person or not, <laughs> it's like, you know, you have to like put yourself out there, be brave, take action. And yep. then yeah. it really, really does just have a snowball effect. And yeah, just more and more things sort of happen. So like when it comes to like PR, like a lot of people don't really understand like what that does for your business. But I think like it's really important to be open minded, isn't it? Because like the op not just the opportunities is in like other opportunities that prevent themselves when you kind of put your foot in it that in that sense. But you're also it's like you're getting a free um you're being shown, you're getting visible for free, really, you're, aren't you? You're, yeah. And when you get kind of promoted in that way, by like a, a, with whether it's a radio show, whether it's a magazine, whether it's, you know, some big influencer on the on, in the online space, whatever kind of PR you get, it's, it's like, it's so much stronger than, you know, like you hear people like paying for slots in magazines. Now that can work as a long-term strategy. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but like this works like, is so powerful because you're not just paying to put yourselves out there you're actually being recommended by that source so whoever that source is like if you get a free feature like a two-page feature you know spread in a magazine or you know you get a, a chat show or you get invited onto a, a um a radio show or whatever it is tv show anything you're being like recommended by that source and yeah. any of the audience watching or viewing you know or following that source it's like that trust it's like that referral type of thing isn't it because you're overcoming one of those main barriers and that's like that trust barrier so in a way mm -hmm. you're already being like put in front of people and and who are saying like you know i trust this person so you can too yeah and that's yeah, it that's it's basically, basically it's social, it's proof, social proof isn't it yeah. so just like anything a bit like a testimonial is social proof it's just proof that you get out there and do stuff and yeah people trust you to to get out yeah. there and do stuff <laughs> definitely definitely um i feel like every time i come on live right lately i've got cold it's that time no. of year isn't it i think i need more fruit more vitamins maybe <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah my little I one's had a cold <laughs> Yeah, my little one's had a cold all of last week and he's still got it. And my husband's got it too, but I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> good, 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 good. Good immune system. I feel like I was like not well a couple of weeks ago and then I was like better. And then all of a sudden it's come back with a vengeance. And it's no. like, yeah, my two babies are both snotty. And no. I don't mind like dirty nappies, things like that I can deal with. But snotty noses oh it's the one <laughs> thing i cannot cope with a snob oh. snot i'm like oh no go away i can't even blow my own nose because it turns me really really sick i am oh, one of the no. people who sit there sniffling away and i am people because i can't blow my own nose oh uh, you don't want my little boy then my little boy just picks his nose and eats it that would not be good for you <laughs> it's not good it's not good <laughs> not good not good kids and they gross oh yeah all weekend aria's just been like you know like crusts all around her nose and i'm like oh yeah mm -hmm. you me afternoon I can, I can deal with anything apart from snot i'm exactly the same amy honestly like i worked in care homes i was like a care assistant for years and years i worked in obviously radiography as well so i dealt with like a lot you know changing elderly people's bums the lot but when it came to snot 
That was the one thing. Oh, the worst one was when we used to have to x-ray and scan sometimes when they would put the um, not like feeding tube down the nose. Mm-hmm. And, oh, I used to be like, no, 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 no. Couldn't do it. It's horrible. <laughs> Something about nose and snot is just turns me can't cope with that <laughs> yeah how was your holiday Anita no you just yeah. recently had a holiday didn't you yeah, it was good we went to Brixham so uh, that's in South Devon so we got away for a week what was really nice actually was I got to meet up with one of my writer friends there so that was really uh, good I did see that was lovely sorry I burst out laughing in the middle of that then <laughs> that's so yuck I'm eating my lunch first <laughs> Watch him. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Sorry, Maxine. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I've seen the pictures. It's so important to have a holiday, isn't it? And to like mm. take some time out. That's yeah. the thing. Don't you find like when you work for yourself, and especially if you work from home as well, um, you can really sort of sometimes find it hard to like have that balance, know when to switch off. Like, yep. especially in the early years when you first start working at home, it's like adapting, isn't it, and getting into that perfect balance. Because otherwise, you can end up just literally working all the time. Like, before I had an office when I used to work from a kitchen table, I, like, didn't know how to control it. And I would, like, literally work ridiculous days, nights, and I'd take my laptop to bed with me, and I'd just be, like constantly working but it's so so important to find a balance isn't it and be able to like stick to certain times I think like time blocking really helps with that as well doesn't it to say like right you know make sure you take this these hours off this is downtime because yeah that just leads to burnout have you ever ever experienced burnout no not really um oh I've got feedback can you hear it um no, no. I I do struggle with boundaries. Like you said, it's hard to to switch off and say, OK, this is family time and this is work time. So, yeah, quite often I'm at the laptop until bedtime and then up again at 5 a.m. to do a bit more and just juggling. Yeah. But no, I haven't reached burnout yet. Thank goodness. I've just booked onto a writer's retreat, actually, for next year, which I'm really oh, excited ah. about. So, yeah, going to meet some other writers and just stay in a cottage and do some oh, that's going to be magical. Network. That's going to be amazing. Yeah. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. You'll get I'd so much to, done. Mm, I'd love to run my own writing retreats as well one day. So just kind of need to try a few out and see what they feel like and get some You will. Ideas and that's the, that's the thing, isn't it? It's like trialing them out. Like I've yeah. just released my new mastermind now, which, you know, I've been toying with for such a long time. But it is about like trialing, like I've been part of so many different masterminds and it's it really helps you to like shape it how you like what would be the perfect one to you? Like and it yeah. takes you know, take all the best parts, mm-hmm. merge it, and then just make like this awesome hybrid, which is like and the thing is as well, we attract the people like us. So yeah. you know then, like if you love it, if it's something, you know, is really like that you were gonna love, you know your audience and your people are gonna love it as well. Oh, that's fab. I think that's like a really, really good um thing to venture into in the future. I think that'd be fab right in the yeah. tree. Definitely. So how's your mastermind gonna look when you put it together? Um, well, at the moment I've only sort of gone so far ahead. So we've um starting off in November and it's going to be like a five week intensive mastermind um, where we sort of focus on obviously looking at the bigger picture or having a year plan breaking that down into the exact steps that we're going to take um, what that look like in six months to be like halfway there what that look like in three months and then the four weeks So like the first week, we'd be like mapping all of that out. And then we'd be working on the first four weeks of the steps we've got to take. And then um, working out then long term, whether we're going to do it for the whole year together or whether we're going to do six months. Um, But yeah, like that was one of the things I said that when I do a mastermind, I want to make sure like I'm all into it. I think that's one of the reasons why I've kind of held off a bit. Is because you know I'm all about my freedom so I'm a bit like oh it's gonna put a lot of like my programs and everything are established now so they like you know they, 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 they're doing well and I can yeah. just sort of take a little bit of a step back 
Um, so I only turn up really to like the, the main live sessions. But the rest of it, it's all built, it's, it's sort of doing well. But I knew like when I bring a mastermind to the table, it's that next level. Not only like, is this something new again? So I'm putting them, I have everything into it. Yeah. But it's yeah. like, it's going to be more intimate anyway because of the higher level it is. Um, so yeah, it was just being ready to give my all to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and long term as well I don't know what that looks like because I've been part of like year long masterminds six month masterminds five month masterminds <laughs> so it's about figuring out like what that looks like and I think it really really does involve the people on the mastermind as well so the women who are on there with me we're gonna like kind of map that out together really and see what that looks like together it's a very much beta version and we will be like sort of figuring out and fine tuning it all together. Um, yeah, but I'm super excited. I'm really ready for it now. Uh, yeah. So, so you'll do some in-person days or retreats as part of that, do you reckon, next yeah, year? Yeah, yeah. So definitely, definitely going to be like retreats in person stuff and that involved in it. Um, and again, it depends like what that looks like, whether it's going to be within six months, within a year. Um, I'm not sure. So we're just starting off with a five week um getting things off the ground and then working yeah. that out together then while the bigger picture looks like but yeah there'll definitely be like as you know i do my vip in person days and um upgrade those to like retreats so there'll be access to those on there um yeah i'm really excited can't wait really okay. new challenge new sort of way of working with people um yeah. yeah and I'm ready for it like after having my daughter and everything's like settled again now it's like yeah really ready to do something like that so yeah it's yeah. exciting um what about you I know you're still like deep into writing at the moment aren't you so you've taken like a you've slowed down a bit with like the client work side haven't you with the copywriting yeah so I've had to take a step back from the one-to-one work really with copywriting because I've got a deadline to meet um let me see I've got a book to write so I need to write a hundred thousand words which is a lot (laughs) I've written about sixty thousand I've got until the end of this year to do the other forty thousand so yeah yeah, it's a lot of words every single week um you've got to be dedicated and determined and yeah just crack it's on. a strategy within itself isn't it you've literally yeah. to write the book like you know you you've got to have that strategy in itself to be able to to complete it not just how it's going to look like breaking it all down and having a like a like a plan with it but then also having that strategy to actually like do it like it's really you have to like organize your time haven't you you like, really got to sort of be strategic and organize your time with it yeah it's, it's, yeah it's hard though because also you want to be creative so yeah uh, yeah just making yourself sit down but also knowing that um you've got to leave some space for creativity rather than feeling like you're working on a deadline all the time yeah yeah scary. so you want it to like free flow type of thing mm. and i suppose that's where these writers retreats come in because that's yeah. like the perfect i could imagine like being on a retreat and I've been on a few and they just there's something magical about retreats where especially if you've got a really like pretty place yeah. it's like yeah. it's so you just relax you're around like-minded people so you get like you bounce off each other you like get this buzz yeah. and yeah. before you know it like you go there with no intention of really working as such maybe like doing the odd bit uh, uh odd bits here and there but like you kind of the more open-minded you go there I feel like the more you really get done you like have massive breakthroughs and yeah maybe that's like really where you can be creative and just sort of see where your juices flow yeah so <laughs> oh I think we all want to see an, an, an Anita retreat now I think I know yeah because I definitely combine some of the copywriting as well and the social media stuff because I know yeah lots of my writer friends that would probably come on a retreat need help with their social media and their websites yeah. and their copy you know their launches and all of that stuff. yeah so, definitely it's an all-rounder isn't it like people do need those those other helps like I know when some of your clients have, have come and had a little bit of help with me like when you know they joined in the challenges or yeah. whatever they've done and it's like you do need like that all-rounder isn't it because some of us have like 
superpowers in certain areas and not others. So we need that kind of all round support. So yeah, it's good that you can bring that as well to the table with that. That's really, really good. And you never know, yeah. perhaps I'll be working on my my full book by then, which I keep saying I'm gonna do. <laughs> so maybe I'll join you. <laughs> what would your book be about about your journey? I think so, yeah. I think it'd be mostly about my journey because I think there's like a lot of inspiration to pull from there and just kind of to show like, you know, there is a, no matter like where you're at, what's going on in your life, that you can still like, there's a light at the end of the tunnel and you can still, no matter what, no matter like what obstacles are put in your way, you can still like achieve what you want to achieve if you really set your mind to it. So I think it'd be like a real sort of inspirational type of, but, yeah, um, kind of empowering and uplifting. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be my first. But there's so many, like I've got so many different ideas. Like, there's just so much in there that I'd be like, I'd love to put out to the world. So, you need to get yeah. yourself on a writer's so retreat nice. and start writing. I know, I know, I know. So many things like, yeah. oh, yeah. Well, you know what you need to do now? You need to get these writer's retreats going, Anita. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm waiting to win the lottery so I can have my lottery winning house and invite everyone round but yeah otherwise I'll do have to actually, hire a do you actually lottery. do the lottery do you actually do the lottery yeah you yeah. do the amount of people I've heard say oh, I need to win the lottery and I'm like do you do the lottery and they're like no I don't know how are you going to win the lottery <laughs> <laughs> yeah a minute to win it <laughs> a minute to win it Sarah says whoa what dedication <laughs> It is, so we've got yeah. about 10 minutes before we start wrapping it up. Um, so this conversation has pretty much been an all-rounder today, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, so anyone watching this who would, you know, be really inspired in the sense of like writing, um, because I think a lot of people feel like, oh, I'd love to do that. I've got so much I could write about, so much value I could give. But like, I'd say the majority of people are like the same as I was. No way, no idea where to start. And like when I wrote my chapter in a book, it was like I had a team to really support with that. And it was like done by um, an agency that really sort of helped with that. So I was like, yeah. Yeah, I was given deadlines. I was given like do this, this, this and that. So I was like, didn't have to work anything out myself, really. It was like it was really step by step. So like. You know, but if I hadn't have had that, I wouldn't have had a clue where to even begin. So, like, what would you say to people who was like really beginning and didn't have a clue where to start with any of it, but loved the idea? Because I do, I hear this all the time. Like, I hear a lot of people saying, oh, they would love to become an author or write a book, but they just wouldn't have a clue where to even start with it. Yeah, it depends yeah. on what you're writing, really. Um, I write novels, which is fiction, but if you want to, write something like the book that you want to write about your your story and stuff um it it would be non-fiction so it wouldn't be the same but either way you just need to outline really so you need to get a big piece of paper and brainstorm that's what I would do so just chuck down on yeah. this piece of paper all the things that you want to share all the things that would um, make up part of your book and then try and put them in some kind of order um yeah what goes in which chapter and then and then make a start <laughs> so it'd be like outlining the chapters really and having like an yeah. overall look at like you know the way to start the end and like piecing it all together the chapters funny enough when i did the um the chapter in the, in the book that i collaborated with uh we had to do like a timeline and that yeah. was like we had a huge piece of paper and had to write out a timeline because like it was um it was like an impact kind of book where we talk about a story or um, like a pivot or something that was like a um, like inspire change type of thing. Well, it's called yeah. like, it starts with me, like um, magic happens when women reclaim their strength and their stories. So it's like using your own story as like, it's powerful, isn't it? Um, yeah. And we had to write like a timeline. So I think I'd probably follow that same structure in the future when I do my my big book and yeah it was like pinpointing because sometimes it's not clear to us is it and I think some people will just think oh I'll just start writing but it's about having that structure first so like you know if you was in the sense of writing something along your story to like have that timeline 
and write down. And I think she said it was like you had to have like the underline and the and the like the pivoting line. So it was like, and quite often like you'd see the way there was like a um what did they call them when there was like a down like a bad um moment you know in your life yeah. where you would yeah. have felt like it was quite a down moment it was quite often followed by something like big like a change like a little bit of pivot or a change in direction um but yeah. they say like that's a, a, a pattern you know, they can they can see in life that when someone has like hit a low it's usually not long after followed by a high because you do kind of um, and it was quite interesting to hear that because then when I did my timeline out and I could really see the ups and downs and it was like, wow, yeah, it is a bit of a pattern here. You can see like when I've hit a low, it's followed with a high and then even when something else happens, like okay. followed with a high. Um, so it's quite an interesting way to think of it really. And it actually links in as well, a little bit of mindset stuff here, but it also links in as well. Like when I worked with a mindset coach, and I remember her saying, like, us when we like going through life, it's like on a, on a plane like that. And every now and again, you'll have like events happen, which will give you like a, a like a spike. Yeah. And then yeah. like you have to come back down from that spike type of thing. And then like you'll sort of come back on that even balance. And then something else might hit you, and it'll be like a spike again, where you're like, you know, put off that thing, and then you've got to come back down. And they said, like, when they were working on me, it was like you had a spike, something's happened, and you haven't been able to come back down, then something else, and then something else. So you're, like, constantly up here rather than it come in and settle in, back down. So they said, like, you've got, like, that back, backed up, um, this kind of thing where it's, like, not settled back down. It's quite interesting, like, when you see things like that, when it comes to, like, life and you know, looking over your story, whether it's from a mindset perspective, whether it's from, you know, writing a book, whether it's from like looking at your content, because a lot of the time we use our stories, don't we, in, within our content and stuff like yeah. that. It's quite interesting to see it as like a timeline with the ups and the downs. And it's quite, yeah, it's quite cool to think of it like that. Yeah. Um, do you have anything you want to add, anything you want to put out there? Like, quick three words of advice to any um business owners female business owners before we say goodbye oh um, so many bits of advice where do you start you can <laughs> round it into three three top okay. ones okay i would say make sure that you celebrate your wins because yeah. i'm rubbish at that i'm always just seeing the things that i haven't achieved that day and I might have achieved 20 things and not achieved two things. And I'll just focus yeah. on the two things. So, yeah, celebrate your wins. OK, absolutely. <laughs> that you haven't done. Um, I would say show up even when it feels hard, um, even if you're just saying, hey, I'm still there, but I'm busy. Um, because if you lose the momentum, if you disappear from Facebook for a few weeks, when you come back, life changes, doesn't it? People have moved on. Yeah. So just try and keep the momentum even if it's just hey I'm there yeah um it doesn't need to be like all strategic and like value yeah. does it just just a simple I'm still here but I'm like looking after me a minute yeah, yeah yeah definitely um and oh so many tips take care of yourself self-care is massive yeah. isn't it because when I'm really busy I just forget about self-care and yeah. then I can't create because I'm not feeling inspired. I'm just feeling exhausted. So, yeah. yeah, even if it's just 10 minutes to meditate or take a walk around the block or read a book or something, look after yourself. Just something because, to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, Absolutely. you won't be able to, to create or think properly. Yeah. And that links back into number one, really, doesn't it? Like when you're talking about, um, you know, being kind to yourself, but also like, not allowing yourself to feel like guilt or to like to actually celebrate the wins because mm -hmm. funny enough I was talking to a business friend of mine this morning who was saying that she'd felt like um she'd been unwell and not like she'd had a few targets that she was supposed to hit and she just felt like she'd gone mm -hmm. off and she was really kicking herself and I said like you know we're all guilty of doing this like we quick like exactly like you said we're quick enough to be really clear on all the things we haven't done we haven't achieved but when we do tick things off the list or achieve sometimes like incredible things, 
we don't give ourselves a big enough pat on the back like we don't celebrate those wins mm -hmm. so like getting into a pattern where you really celebrate the wins even the little things because yeah we are quick enough to kick ourselves if we if we don't achieve them so yeah good practice to get into really celebrating them as well so that mm -hmm. Yeah, don't feel guilty over it and don't allow yourself to feel guilty over like little things. We all, well, it's life, isn't it? We're all human. Yeah, yeah. We all need some downtime or, you know, we all get ill at the end of the day. Yeah, um, yeah we are quick. We're quick to be harsh on ourselves, I think, as humans, yeah. aren't we? Oh, well, thank you very, very much for coming on the show. Some thank really, you. Really fab tips there. Uh, Maxine says, great advice. Thank you, Anita. Um, we're going to love you and leave you. And I will speak to you soon. Bye, guys. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.